All right, Coach Greenlee. First things first, welcome uh, to the live broadcast here. Like I like having conversation with guys like you. Um, you were actually the first person I talked to when all of this came down. When I started doing these video interviews, you were the guy. Yeah, yeah, I remember. We were. Uh, it was actually during like my lunch break or something. It was crazy. So, um, yeah, it was man. In between it, classes or something. Yeah, it was in between. It was my lunch break. Yeah, and I had yeah. to, I had to cut you short because I had class starting. But um. Now, you know, and you, it, it, we're in a different world right now. You know, a month and a half ago from when you and I talked to now, uh, you know, two months, going on, you know, a month and a half, about six weeks. It's a different world, and, and, and the world's changed a lot in, in, in every way, shape, and form. Um, the future of, of, of America's changed, economically speaking. Our retirement's changed. But w w what have you been up to for the last six weeks since we talked, since the cancellation of the tournament? Seems like you have a lot of conference calls, a lot of Zoom calls, a lot, a lot of uh, video calls. Um, you know, I mean, we're trying to, to to recruit. We're trying to do all those things. I just think it's pretty tough from the standpoint of, uh, you know, if I'm deciding where I want to go to college, I want to get on campus. We have some virtual tours and stuff like that, but I still want to get on campus and check it out. And um, to me, a face-to-face -face meeting is more important than a phone meeting or anything like that. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're plugging away at it. We're giving our guys some workouts to do and what they can do. And it's a little bit tough from the standpoint of you might have a really good weight room in your house or garage or basement, whatever it might be. And the next guy got a couple five gallon buckets and that's it. You know, like what, what prompted us to talk yesterday is I got a call from a high school coach and there were some concerned people about, um, you know, a tweet that was sent out by uh, Ohio University Wrestling. And then I, I retweeted it and I said, this is a death penalty for a lot of a lot of Olympic sports. But, you know, off camera, you and I are talking and, and it's something your college coach told you and it's something you told me. And it was about the opportunity for the future. And my kids are four and two year old boys. Right. And, and what'd you tell me about them? My college coach, <clears throat> you know, that, that was, um, that was the time when, when, when title nine was really hitting wrestling programs hard and budget cuts and all that stuff. And he told me we were on a road trip somewhere. And he told me one time that, uh, if it keeps going the way it was going, my kids wouldn't have an opportunity to wrestle. And, and for me, wrestling has been a pretty, pretty important. I mean, it's given me opportunities, experiences really shaped my life that I wouldn't have had otherwise. So it's, it's important to me. You know, it's like, it, it's what brought you to Ohio, you know, over 22 years ago, right, Joel? 97, mm -hmm. 96 or 97, when did you show up? 97. 97, because I remember I was in that first recruiting class that you were trying to get. I actually verbally commu committed to you guys, and then um, I didn't win the state title, and it was like, I don't think you're going to change the offer anyway. You were still like, hey, we're going to give you what we're going to give you. Um and then, you know, that just changed. And my mom and dad were like, hey, it's four hours away. Good luck. <laughs> uh, we're not, we're not, don't, we're not going to help you if you go there. And that, and, you know, I went to Kent, which was two hours closer. And that, you know, that changed me. But like wrestling changed my life, right? Like yeah. I could have gone to Bowling Green or Toledo and not wrestled. And that would have changed my life. I never would have met my wife. And, you know, she played volleyball at Kent. I wrestled. So it changed my life. And it's obviously changed yours. But, What's it been like, you know, since you've been there at Ohio University? You you guys have had, you know, some of this as far as it goes. Not even, I'm saying, like, not even competition, but, you know, 2008, 2009, we had a downturn in the economy, right? We had the housing yeah. crisis. Now we've got this, you know. What's it been like for you to, to kind of balance it all and keep a competitive team on the mat? Uh, I just think it's, you know, slow and steady. You got to keep plugging away, and you're in the mat, so you're going to have a little bit of, ups and downs anyway um you know we we can't really stockpile talent like a lot of places do uh but i think we can still get kids that are great and can compete for a national title and all american status and stuff like that so um you, you know you just got to keep plugging away and, and building good relationships and working hard at it and make sure your staff's working hard at it and um you'll be in good shape when you look at, you know, when you send a tweet out yesterday, did you think, did you anticipate that so many people would get nervous about it? Uh, yeah, I, I knew that before I sent it. 
But but my thing was this is like I said, wrestling's super important to me, and I'm not concerned about Ohio University wrestling. To be honest, I mean I think we have a great athletic director, we have a great sports supervisor, we have a great president um, that are committed to keeping sports, committed to, to keeping people here through this tough time. Um, but I, I'm, I'm you know, and I'm not necessarily just worried about wrestling. I'm worried about everybody. You know, golf, tennis, field hockey, soccer, softball, baseball, all that stuff. If if you're allowed to reduce the number of sports, if the NCAA allows schools to reduce the number, the minimum number of sports. What is the minimum number right now, Joel? And what's that actual breakdown when they talk Title Nine and when they talk about gender equity? When they talk about you got to have X amount of sports to be uh, to to be Division One in basketball and, and football because we all know that that's those are the two big ones: basketball, men's basketball, and football. They're they're the cash cows. What is the breakdown, Joel? Well, first of all, Zeb, you know I'm a wrestling coach, so I don't know all that stuff. What I know is to be an FBS school is uh, you have to have a minimum number of sixteen sports. Okay. Uh, for Ohio University, we have six men's sports and 11 women's sports. That's I, I know that. Um, I, you know, other than that, I, I really don't know. But I just know, I, I think, you know, I think all sports are important. Um, you know, it, it helps all students and it adds value to the school and it adds value to your athletic program. Um, I know athletics in general. You know, when I was driving this morning, uh, the OHSAA has a, a commercial out about how important high school athletics is the development of kids. Well, I feel the same way about college students. Joel, you obviously know the breakdown. It's 16 sports. And what they're, that what we've seen is it's rumored so far what I've seen. I've, I've seen confirmed reports. I've seen rumors. They want to grant a waiver to NCAA, like a relief waiver, hey, you can have less sports and still be a part of FBS, Division One, Division One basketball and all that because you have to have, you have to sponsor so many intercollegiate athletic uh, men's and women's sports. 16 is the number right now. I'm hearing 14. I'm, we, we, you know, I, I, I don't know if you've heard what I've heard, but that would obviously, that would, that would affect Olympic sports. Yeah, oh yeah. I, I haven't heard a number, uh, you know, whether it be 14, 15, what I haven't heard a number, so I, I don't know any of that. And uh, you know, from my standpoint, I, I'm concerned. For, you know, for for the Olympic sports, and I, I think sometimes, um, you, you know, if you're old school like I am, they they were never called Olympic sport, sports; they were called non-revenue sports. Now they're called Olympic sports. So sometimes people get mixed up. The Olympic sports. Well, what do we care about that? Uh, that's basically your old school non-revenue sports at, at, at college as well. You know, I'm concerned about all of them. I'm concerned about the men's and women's sports. I just think it's important that, hey, this is a tough time. We knew it was going to be a tough time. We have to find a way to work through it and, and maybe change the way we do things. Everything that prompted your tweet, Joel, was University of Cincinnati, which – is it, they are right on the cusp of being a major, a major power five type conference team, right? They're 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 the highest mid major, I would say. Would you agree with that? Uh, without putting a lot of thought into it, I'd say yeah, you're pretty right on. Yeah. So, but you know they they went they made this huge hire. They hired Luke Fickle, um, and you know you're paying Luke Fickle seven figures. Um, and Luke Fickle, consequently, you know, incidentally, one of the greatest heavyweights in the history of Ohio Ohio, Ohio high school wrestling, three time state champ. Um, and, and we're talking a wrestling guy, right? Right. And so he understands the Olympic sports, and he's made statements like, "I'll recruit any state champion in Ohio above 170 pounds." You know, he he believes in recruiting wrestlers. He understands the sport of wrestling. He gets it. That being said, Luke Fickle isn't the one who made the decision. But we have a wrestling oh, guy. Yeah, that's we have a red. We have a wrestling guy that's the head coach. Cincinnati drops men's soccer. Okay, and 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 then we we've seen some other little schools that have done it. 
some D2 schools that have dropped a bunch of sports, you know, obviously to stay, keep the doors open. Um, but then they make a video. I don't know if you saw it. Football saw it. makes a video where they're piling gear in a locker. And this is two days after they drop, they make this video. The optics of that are not very good. And I'm guessing Luke Fickle has looked like it's probably not something he concerns himself with. He, everything, it's an arms race. We know that to recruit kids and get them on campus. And, yep. and in this time, you got to do something. You got to be creative. I'm not faulting him for that. But two days after they drop a program, they look at how much gear we can give our guys, right? The optics yeah. aren't good. It's just not good. I, I actually saw it and then tweeted back at them or responded their tweet about, I just thought it was insensitive. Uh, talk about not knowing your surroundings and, you know, do you realize you dropped men's soccer two days ago? And I don't begrudge those guys from getting gear. And if you look through it, all right, they, they need a lot of different gear. Okay, do they need everything they get? I doubt it, it but it's probably going to be reeled in for, for them as well in the next few months just because of the environment you're in. Yeah, and then I saw the, I think it's the Oklahoma coach. Is it Lincoln Riley? Yeah. He made some crazy, he said some crazy things. And then the guy with the mullet, the Oklahoma State guy, he said some crazy. I've seen some things these guys have said about like remote training and, and, and you know, but, but football's the king, man. Football's the king. Joel, I think when this is really, we're really going to see this, this, this economic bear down is that they don't have football next year. Uh, well, I think we all have our fingers crossed and hope for that that's going to happen because that really kind of drives the bus. But uh, I agree. If they don't, man, oh, man, college athletics is in uh, in a little bit of turmoil. It's in huge trouble. I mean, there's no question about it. But, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I feel good that you're confident about the, the future of Ohio University wrestling. But um, what can we do, Joel? What do you think? Like, how do we got to get creative here? What do we got to do to keep our sport viable? And I know you might not have the silver bullet and all the solutions, and I'm just a kid from Waverly, Iowa. Oh, gee, shucks, I don't know it all. But, you know, Joel, what do we got to do to stay viable and stay on the, the front edge of this? Well, I, I think you got you have to make, wherever you're at, you have to make it wrestling important, and you have to do the right things, and you have to, you, you have, to have kids that are involved in campus life and in, in, in Involved in being a student athlete, not just a wrestler. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I was a, I was a wrestler. I think I put my head down, did what I was supposed to do, and um, didn't get involved in a whole heck of a lot of other things. Um, and I look back now and and kind of wish I would have, just for you, you know the vi the viability of the sport. But I think some things that are super important that the NWCA is working on, other wrestling coaches, you know. You know, Tom Ryan's a huge advocate of a, a dual meet championship. I, I think dual meets are king. Um, I understand it. I'm a wrestling guy. I actually love to go to tournaments and be there all day. But I, I don't think, you know, Zeb Miller's wife probably didn't know a whole heck of a lot about wrestling before she met Zeb Miller. When you're taking your kids to a tournament and they're there all day long and they wrestled three or four matches and they're sleeping in the bleachers and you're there for 10 hours. She's driving home thinking about, man, that basketball is not so bad. We're at a game for two hours and we get to go home. So I think even at that level, I get it. You need to wrestle those matches to get better. But I also think, Hey, do a meet to grow the sport and wrestling to get m more people involved. Like you really got the, the, the grudge match going with us and Kent. Okay. I think that's pretty important. Um, you know, I know our guys look forward to it. I know their guys look forward to it. Um, you know, it's, it's one of the, I don't, a highlight matches of the year for us, no matter what the year is, you know, you have an opportunity to wrestle. Sorry about that. Uh, you have an opportunity to wrestle Kent and, um, it, it's going to be a, it, no matter if it's there or if it's here, it's going to be a good crowd and it's going to be a fun match. Um, and, and that's really what I want for my guys. I, 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 when I look back at my college career, I don't necessarily look back and remember wins and losses and things like that. I remember 
you know, wrestling in Carver Hawkeye in front of 15,000 people. I remember wrestling in the Unidome um, during a snowstorm and we beat Iowa State and they had, we had 12,000 people there. Um, so I think things like that are important. And, and um, sometimes I think we sit on our hands a little bit and think about, um, you, you know, well, that's, that's marketing's job or promotion's job. You know what? That's really our job. You know, that's really our job. And I, I, I realize, man, it's tough to do all the things that you have to do. Um, but we're kind of the, you know, the stewards of the sport. We got We have to keep improving it and keep moving it along and keep it viable. You know, it's, it's funny you bring the grudge match up. Um, I, I uh, just sold one of my rental properties. I got a couple of rental properties down in Kent. I went to two different ones. And on the mantle, wrestlers lived in both houses. And on the mantle, two of the years they beat you. Yeah. Two of the years, the grudge match is on two different mantles in two different houses. And and my yeah. thing is like, that's cool to them because now you got that up there. You can look at it. You know, like, hey, we got we got to keep it here another year. That's a huge like when you hit me up for that. First off, my favorite thing is you hit me up in a year where you guys were gonna beat them. <laughs> and, you, and Andresi was so pissed. He was like, "Ah, oh, you're making this in a year. They're going to beat us. And he knows what he's doing. And at the end of the day, I think that, that Jimmy I'm really likes it. I'm just a country boy from Waverly, Iowa. I, I, Waverly, Iowa. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> you knew. And then uh, Scott Blank made that. He's the head coach at Ashtabula St. John. He yep. literally is the one who made it. I didn't make He was like, this is what I'm going to do. And he wrestled at Kent State. And. Um, you know, they've had some guys that have gone D1 from, from St. John. Um, Ethan Duca is one of his guys. He's going to Edinburgh yeah. next year. And then, um, the Cumberledge kid, I, Cumberledge was a state runner up for him. You got Cumberledge, yeah, they, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, um, it was Scott Blank and the dude, Scott Blank's a saint, man. He's just a really good guy. He made it. And then we got school canceled and I had to drive up to Riverside and get it. <laughs> a, a janitor had to let me into the. We got school canceled in a couple days in a row. And then I think my nephews and I got on a bus and we came down to Athens. Yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. And then, um, but I mean, you made an event out of it. And, you, and that I think that's something you took from J-Rob. You've, you've told me this on several occasions. J-Rob is the one who you said you went and you wrestled a duel in Minneapolis and there were 20 people there. When, uh, when I was in college, we'd go wrestle at Minnesota and then, you know, there's 5,000 people next door at the hockey game, but 20 people at the wrestling meet. And, and he did some, uh, he did some amazing things just in, in marketing and promotions and, and really built, built Minnesota into a national power. And, and, you know, like, like you said, it's your job. I think, I think a lot of us, like we want to, Oh, that's, you know, that's marketing job. That's, whatever, not compliance, but there's so many departments within an athletic department, marketing, right. compliance, um, nutrition. There's all these different departments do you have within a, a college athletic department. I think we want to pass the buck, but you know, it comes down to it. You want it done. You got to get it done yourself. And yeah, and they, you know, wrestlers are perfect guys. You know, that's kind of the mentality they have, I, I, you know, and that's like, I like working with wrestling people, like these businesses I work with. Like, for example, I got a Barbarian Apparel shirt on. That's a guy out of yep. Cincinnati, Josh Sasby. Yep. Dude, the guy's a worker, man. The guy's a worker. I have yeah. uh, bottles of Defense Soap, which I've given you and we've done plugs for. That's got, you know, that's Guy and Gus Seiko, Charlie yep. Agazino. Those guys are hustlers, man. They work hard and they're, and they're putting out the best products out there. And you know what you're getting with those guys. You know what you're getting. You know that if... Uh, Sassy messes an order up, he's going to make the order right. You know that, um, I think he has it on a guarantee on this bottle. You can actually call like a hotline on Defense Soap. And if you don't like it, they give you your money back. I, I we, we, uh, we actually use some of their products for different things. And uh, they've been unbelievably good for, for us to work, work with. And then, you know, when, just in that sense, if there's something wrong, Joel, and you call Guy Guy or Gus Seiko or Charlie Agazino, they're going to make it right. And that yeah. is because, what's it because? It comes back to what we're just talking about. They're what? What's they're their wrestlers. background? They're wrestlers. There you go. And that's why, like, uh, those guys, man, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer for me to work with those guys. Um, 
And I think you guys do your gear store through Compound and Cliff Fretwell. I've seen that before. So we've done it through a bunch of different guys. I mean, we, you know, we, we've done it through Compound and Cliff, and we've done it through Rudis, and um, we had an Adidas store. And I'm trying to think who else. Uh, you know, uh, we we move it around a little bit, but uh, you know, that's that's one of those things. Is I'm just concerned about getting Ohio gear out there. Yeah. You know, I want I want Zeb Miller as a fan or as a as a as a parent to come to. Ohio University wrestling matches wearing Ohio University wrestling gear. Hey, just so you know, about two fifty five right now. I've I've crested at the two sixty mark, and then I came back down because I started running again, and we we hike every day. But I I oh, uh, hiking. I, I uh, yeah, we, we hike a lot, man. We hike a lot. Um, yesterday was the last two days were crazy. Um, my kid climbed up this like real steep hill. In this, yeah. out of the Sugarman River Valley, and I'm like, I got so nervous because I had the little one in front of me. I had to have my hands on him the whole time, and the other one, Ferdinand, the four year old, he was in front of me, and I kept worrying about him tumbling back, and I kept being like, "No, fall in, fall on your face, and slide," you know. And like, we were just talking about that stuff, but, but back to it. Double X, if you were wondering. Double okay. X. Double X. I got you. Double X. Are, are, and that was the next thing I was going to ask you, Joe. It looks like you're in the office, or are you at home? Where are you? Do you have access to the convo right now? Um, actually, I had to get a, uh, a couple of papers from the convo, so I'm sitting in there, but I usually work from home. Um, I just had to get a couple of things to, to finish some, you know, university concur paperwork, which is our, like, credit card system. And concur expense report. Concur expense report. What's that? Yeah, yeah. Report, yeah, I got you. So you'll be able to slide on into the equipment room, and grab some double X squats or whatever. Okay, that's cool. I appreciate that. Hey, that place is like Fort Knox. You're no, I know, there. man. I get it. I get it. Um, Joel, what's it like been running a program under this whole situation? You don't have access to the guys in person. Um, you might have Zoom meetings. Um, it's really a lot on their own right now. They don't really even have access. Uh, well, they do, but everything's remote like this. Yep. Very different than seeing somebody, you know, being able to talk to them and see what they got with them. Or, I don't know, if, if a guy uh, has been out late, you can't tell in this if someone's been out partying or what they've been doing. <laughs> it's very different. You get what I'm saying, right? Like, seeing someone in person is very different from a Zoom meeting. It's very different from a, a video chat. A pretty cool thing is our our university, when this whole started, our athletic department, our athletic director, bought us this thing called teamwork. So it's easy to text guys. It's easy to, to uh, um, send them emails, to give them reminders and all that. And, and to me, that's kind of a double-edged sword a little bit. You don't want to send them so much stuff. They look at it and, and they stop reading it because you're sending them something every 20 minutes. Um, so... If I send them something, I want it to mean something, so I try to keep it to a minimum. Um, we, we have weekly Zoom calls. Um, you know, we give them suggested workouts and different things they can do, which I kind of said earlier, that's kind of hard because, you know, Zepp Miller might have a great setup in his garage or basement, and then Joel Grinley's got, you know, nothing. But I'm a firm believer in something's better than nothing, you know, so... And I think, uh, you know, when we're allowed to get back on the mat and, and we're allowed to start competing and we're allowed to do all those things again, um, the guys that worked hard during this time, it'll really pay off. You know, you'll, you'll see those guys really kind of excel and the guys that didn't, um, you know, they're going to struggle a little bit. So, and, and we just try to get that point across that, you know, to me, the beauty of wrestling and when I really kind of started to, to reach the, the upper levels of wrestling is I knew what to do, when to do it, how to do it, and I did it. Uh, All right. Know, Some of that I had to figure out, but I figured it out. When you look at, you know, back on your career and, you know, like it's just such a different landscape, but it started, you started to feel like your college coach told you, who was your college? Who was the head coach at UNI when you were there, Joel? Don, Don Briggs. Don Briggs. Yep. 
So Don Briggs saw, maybe he didn't see something like this coming, but he saw the future of the sport was was in decline with Title IX, gender equity. Um, you know, like, it's just so much different now. Kids well, aren't different. When I started college, there were, there were over 200 Division I college wrestling, college wrestling programs. Wow. When did you graduate from high school, Joel? 1984. Okay. And what was your first year on the U.S. national team? Uh, my sophomore year in college, so uh, 87-ish. You were, you were a top three guy on the freestyle ladder in 87. Yeah. It, yeah. I th- I, after, after, my sophomore, after my sophomore year. Jesus, Pete. That – and like, weren't you like an eighty-nine pounder as a senior, or like a tall? Yeah, the the weight at the time was one eighty-five. So you were an eighty-five as a senior. Yeah. So you, how tall is Justin compared to you, your brother, your younger brother? I think he's about. I think he's probably two. I'm about six four. He's about six six. So the Greenleys, when you saw them in high school, looked like basketball players. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I, I think Justin, <laughs> for that matter, he, he, I think the weight at the time was 167. He wrestled that his sophomore year. I wrestled 185 all four years. Um, and I think Justin wrestled 67, 85 heavyweight is kind of how his growth curve went. And then he was a heavyweight all, all four years in college. And I wrestled... My redshirt year and my freshman year, I wrestled 190 in college. Oh, I, see, I didn't know you wrestled 190 at all. Yeah. Did you qualify at 190? Yeah, uh, I was around 12 guy my my freshman year. And then got so, beat by got beat by Big Pump and Pump and. Uh, oh, by Rex Steiner. <laughs> yeah. Big Pump and Pump beat you. Was he? Hey, was he as gassed up then as he as he is 10 years ago? No, no, because, you know, the weight was 190. He was big and strong, I'll say that. How bad he beat you? By one. Jeez, oh, Pete. And it, was that your freshman or sophomore year? Freshman year. And then sophomore year, you 90 again? No, I, I moved up to heavyweight that year. Hey, uh, Jim Nielsen. Jim Nielsen, big Jim from BYU? Yeah. yeah. Jim Nielsen just said hello, by the way, on the chat. Tell him I said hi. Yeah, he's a good guy. He can hear you. He can hear you. Um, did you guys hit at the NCAs ever? We wrestled in, in freestyle, I think. I, I mean, you got to remember, for me, that was a long time ago. I, I don't remember everybody, but I, I think it was in freestyle that we wrestled. Yeah, Jim's a good guy. I met him out in Washington this summer at a camp um, at, in Spokane. Uh, actually, in Cheney, Cheney at Eastern Washington. Good guy, and he's a trainer for uh, – he does training trips. He's an athletic trainer. Really good guy. But um, yeah, I love I love looking back. Another guy I see out there is uh, what his kids transfer into Ohio State. Dave Orndorff. Did you did you and Dave wrestle? Yeah, we. Uh, you know what? I should know this because we wrestled Utah Valley this year, and his dad came to watch and, and came up, and we. We talked briefly after the match, so uh, I think he was a senior my sophomore year, maybe. And then he made the finals your that sophomore year. year. That year, did you yeah. place as a sophomore? No, I think I was. I think I might have been the third seed. Um, oh, uh, lost in a controversial match in the in the quarters, and then. Um, you know, just bonehead young guy stuff. I can't win it. Who cares? Type of stuff. <laughs> Did your guy have to make the finals for you to be pulled back in then? Uh, no, no, I don't think it was ever they had to make the finals. I think they had to, I think my freshman year, they might have had to make the, the semis. And then after that, it changed to true double elimination, I believe. Uh, yeah, I don't I'm not. I'm not 100 percent positive, but that's what I think happened. I don't know what we were doing with that whole system. I'm sorry. It just that's idiotic. Do you want to say hi real quick? Do you want to say hi? Here? We got Thomas. This is Thomas. 
Hey, Thomas, how are you? Say hi. Still got yeah. your Batman jammas on? Batman jammas, and then he's got a, uh, a Superman slap bracelet. And he's All a real right. piece of work, too. Real piece of work. I named him after my dad. So you know he's got to be a real piece of work. All right, in there with my mother. Let's go. Um, so yeah, that whole system, it's crazy to think that there were 200 D1 programs. Hey, Joel, when you came up, Waverly wasn't, um, Waverly wasn't, it was like you and your brother. It wasn't like Waverly was like what, um, what Graham is or what. No, uh, not, not. I mean, they, they'd have, they'd have some individual success some state titles before I got there. Um, you know, I think my sophomore year I was kind of the, I didn't really know what was going on. I just liked the wrestle in my sophomore year. I won the districts and went to state. I was the only guy. And I think my junior year, there might have been two of us. And my senior year, there might have been two or three of us as well. What's the age difference between you and Justin? Uh, five years. Five years. So you just, you, a lot of us with Justin is my guess. Right? Uh, you know what? He, he We trained a lot together in, in college and, and, uh, you know, if, if he was sitting next to me, he'd probably say he beat me, and I'm going to say I beat him. So, uh, I, you know, in freestyle, we wrestled one time, and I, I actually won that match. But I, I'd say in the wrestling room, we had battles. I mean, he was pretty goddamn good on top. and um, You know, that bottom was probably my kryptonite as far as the college wrestler goes. And, uh, um, man, he, he, was, he was tough to wrestle. Okay, right now. Right now, I got to know. Right now, what are you, 54? 53? Yeah. 54. 54. So Justin's 49. Mm -hmm. Right now, he flies from Ames or wherever he lives. He flies into Columbus. He drives down to Athens. You strap up in the convo. Who wins? Dog fight. Dog fight. Uh, you know what? He's probably better shaped than I am. He's a little thinner. Um, I'll give myself the weight advantage. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Well, he's a professor now. Is he still at Iowa State? He's a, um, he's a doctor doctor. So he got his doctor of veterinary medicine, and he got his PhD in animal pathology, and he works for the FDA. He's a scientist for the FDA. So – Justin works for the FDA. Does he still live in Iowa? Yeah, he lives in Ames. He still lives in Ames. Okay. Because he was yeah, a professor his, at Iowa, his, Iowa State, right? Uh, his wife is. Wife is? Okay. But he, he, what did he do for a while? He Was he working at Iowa State or in some capacity? Uh, I, he was at one point in time, I believe. Okay. All right. So that I love to hear that you guys, yeah, that you, that there were some good scripts. When did you guys wrestle? Where? Where'd you wrestle your baby brother? Vegas. Vegas? How bad you beat him? You know, I don't know. I, I, I remember more of the situation than, than the actual score or what happened. Um, we both wrestled for New York Athletic Club, and Sonny Greenhall was the coach at the time. And he came up to me and said, hey, uh, you know, you got your brother this round. I don't think you guys should wrestle. And I go, ah, you know what, what, whatever, we can wrestle. He's like, nah, you guys shouldn't wrestle. And I go, okay, you know. But he forfeits to me. I don't forfeit to him. So you guys and wrestled. Then, you wrestled. So he, then he goes to Justin. and Justin's like, nah, I think we should wrestle, blah, blah, blah. And Sonny's like, I don't think you should. And Justin pretty much they said, hey, you know what, that's fine. But he forfeits me to me. I don't forfeit to him. <laughs> You know, we wrestle and practice all the time. He says he wins. I say I win. Let's figure it out. So we figured it out. <laughs> you won, though. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I was obviously older and had been wrestling freestyle a lot. You know, I'm on the freestyle circuit at that time quite a bit. So, um, you know, it was fun. It was memorable. It was, you know. How many U.S. national teams did you make total, Joel? You know what? I, I don't really know. Is it double digits? I'd say, I'd say somewhere six, eight. Six, eight. 
And was it all? It was always Bruce in front of you, always. Yeah, when I was younger, it was a scrap. You know, um, Tom Erickson was was you know one of the best guys out there. Bruce was one of the best guys out there. You know, you, you look back at it and you look at man, Ruline Gardner was wrestling freestyle at the time. Gafari was wrestling freestyle at the time. There was a lot of good good heavyweights. Is Erickson the one that fought in Pride? Um, you know what? I'm not. I'm not real up on all that stuff, but I know he was doing some type of MMA. I, I you know, I don't know the difference between oh, UFC. And I think Bellator it's Severn. Pride. I think it was Severn. What? I think it was Dan Severn. I wrestled him too. And then there's an Dan Severn has an older brother too, doesn't he? Uh, no, he's got a younger, Dan's the, the, I don't know about oldest, but he's the older and Rod wrestled at Arizona State. I wrestled him in college actually and he's, he's younger. Okay. He's younger. Okay. I thought he might've been older. Okay. I just like, listen, I'm a, I'm a nostalgia man. If you haven't noticed, I love it. I love it. Um, where do we go from here, Joel? Where, where does, where do we, what, what do we gotta, I know you don't have the, the, all the answers, but how do we change this for a positive for wrestling, man? How do we? How do we take a crisis, COVID-19 crisis, and how do we advance the sport? How do we create more meaningful rivalries? What more can we do, man? Well, I think you're already seeing a lot of pretty cool things out of different programs. I know, like, we're, we tried to do some stuff for our national qualifiers, some stuff for our seniors, some, some stuff for important guys on our team, and we're, we're going to continue to, to you know – to, to, to do that on Twitter and Facebook and stuff like that. I think, you know, um, I know Ohio State and UVA have virtual banquets and awards, and I, I think all that stuff's pretty cool. Keeps your fans engaged, keeps them involved. Um, you know, it, as far as the guys go, I think, uh, you know, for, I, I tell our guys this all the time. When I was in college, um, over the summer, I worked, had a job where I worked 40 hours a week, got done working, went and lift weights, went and wrestled after that, went and ate supper, ran sometime later at night. And I'm not saying I did that every day, but that's what I did a lot. And uh, probably did five years of that, and I don't know if I ever saw a coach. All right. So I think this is going to take a little bit of uh, – you know, and, and we were there for our guys every day, whether it was lifting or running or wrestling. Um, I, I think it's going to take, hey, now it's a little bit on their own responsibility. They're figuring out what to do. Um, they're they're, they're going to become better wrestlers because of that. So I, I think you focus on what you can do, not what you can't do. Yeah, and, and you know, it was funny you asked me, <laughs> said, hey, you know this guy, you were shooting me some names, you know this guy, you know that guy. You guys are doing a ton of recruiting right now, but like, it's just not like getting a kid down to Athens and letting them walk on the brick streets and up and down the hills and and see what that place is like because it's such a cool campus. It's Is it hard well, to recruit think, now with the virtual and, and phone calls and texting? Is it hard? I think it's hard because that's – probably my you know that's my weakest area i'm not i don't like to be on the phone a ton i don't like to text me you know my thumbs are this big you know so every every other word's misspelled <laughs> let me see those bad boys again oh my god look like rolls of sacagawea coins dude oh my god my assistant was Kyle Hansen for years and years and years, and we were at a tournament. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty notorious for sending a text message, and it's got at least one word screwed in, up in it or whatever, you know, just because my thumbs are so big and I hit the wrong letter or number or whatever. And uh, I sent him a text message, boom, didn't even look at it, stuck my phone back in my pocket, didn't hear from him, didn't hear from him, and I get just question marks back. And I look at the text message. I couldn't make out one word. <laughs> I even knew what I sent him, and I couldn't make out one word. So, uh. Hey, did you see the call this year 
at the high school tournament, the Maumee Bay Classic. It was Hanson's guy in the finals. Uh, Did you see that yeah, that no was, call? Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> I saw it. How did he not lose his mind? Actually, I talked to him on the way home. <laughs> oh, my. That was, was bad. We were driving home from that tournament. We were driving home from the tournament. And, uh, you know, I, he's a pretty reasonable guy when it comes to that stuff. And he's like, yeah, you shouldn't have let it come down to that. So, Oh, man. But, like, it was awesome because someone's like, who's this guy with the, the winter coat and the ball cap on it? I'm like, well, it's Kyle Hansen, you idiots. You ought to see his beard now. Oh, man, so man. strong. So strong. What does he do up there now? Does he work at the school? Um, he, he lives in Brighton, and I, obviously he's coaching wrestling. And, and then uh, um, uh, he works at the school doing something, I think, like security. Yeah, or he, something. Was, he was working at the school. He, he's like a, one of those indoor sports facilities, kind of the, the manager of that. Got it. okay. So he okay, he's still working, he's still involved. And his wife works up there. They went there for his wife's job, didn't they? Yeah, she I think she works at the University of Michigan now, actually. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. Um Joel, what, do, do we have a time frame? I know they extended to May thirty first. Do we have a time frame when you guys can start getting guys back down on campus at all? Uh I don't know that that's gonna be across the board. Hey, you know what? May 31st, it opens up for everybody. I I could see it, you know, kind of how they're opening the country back up, for lack of a better word, that it, it might be different in some different spots. Um, uh, I, I would be surprised if it was before July 1st, Okay. to be honest. I mean, I don't know anything. Nobody said anything to me. Um, I, I would just... I don't. That's. I don't know why I think that. That's just kind of what I think. Yeah. June fifteenth, July first, somewhere in there, I think would be a good. And it's all going to depends on what ha what happens. I mean, where, you, you know, you you watch the news now, and they're talking about opening the country back up and all that stuff in in the next uh, few weeks. And I'd say if numbers keep going down, we're in good shape. If numbers flare back up, oh boy. Are your guys, are all the, the parents and families of your guys good? Or have you heard any cases of uh, people having it? I talked to T.R. Foley. He works for UWW, um, mm -hmm. journalist, All-American for University of Virginia. T.R. Foley had COVID-19. Wow. And, and he quarantined in his parents' house in um, uh, at, where ODU is, Norfolk. Um, yeah. Joel, I, I didn't bring ODU up, but I'm going to bring it up. Um, did you guys see that comment? And, and was, did that send some shockwaves through you guys? And did that get you guys on edge a little bit with what happened to Old Dominion? And and I'll tell you what, Old Dominion tougher nails. He Martin could recruit. They had a great dual team. They had an All American in Pittsburgh. I mean, that's a viable program. It's one of the best on the campus. What'd you guys think of that when that decision came down from Old Dominion? Ah. Uh. <laughs> You know, I, losing any wrestling program hurts. I mean, it, it, to me, it was shocking. It wasn't. It, it wasn't a program that you kind of looked at and thought, "Oh my gosh, they're on on the on the edge." But I don't know a lot about campus there either, as far as you know. I don't I, what their Title IX situation was, what their budget situation was, any of that stuff. Um, you know, so. Yes, it hurts. Yes, are you, are you concerned? Uh, do I know enough about it to say, oh, my goodness, um, I, I don't. I mean, you know, I think it, it goes back to one of those things. Uh, they were so set on being Division One in football that they joined a conference that's spread out all over the country. And it's going to take a lot of money to do that for all sports, not just football, I, you know. Um, because doesn't aren't is a conference USA they're in? Yeah, they're in a conference that they're all kicking their coverage so, on their conference. So they have you know they have teams in Texas. So you're you're going to have to fly to Texas, and you know that's that's. Well, then you have, you have to send the equipment semi to Texas too. Yeah. Think yeah. about that. Yeah, you, you know so. Ah. That was something where. 
did you guys were it was just a shockwaves though, man. It's just like it's like these gut punches. It's like Eastern Michigan after Cleveland, and then you know those guys after this year and the cancellation. Um, it feels like a lot of these, like the ones we've seen, where they've dropped Olympic sports. Um, it feels like it's easy for athletic directors to blame blame it on this crisis. Well, I, I think you have to pay attention to what's going on around you. Like um, Bob Bowlesby was the athletic director at Northern Iowa when I was an athlete there and when I first got hired as an assistant wrestling coach. Um, I was somewhere and he did a presentation and he talked about the cost of attendance and unlimited meals um, costing $2 million. And, and that that was something that was going to, that, that was going to hurt Olympic sports. Well, two years after that, or a year and a half after that, Eastern Michigan drops wrestling and what they say they're, what they say they're over budget. $2 million. There you go. So, um, I understand all of the, uh, all, all of the, the, the cost of attendance and the unlimited meals and uh, all, I, I understand that stuff, but I also think, you know, you're, you're here to be a student. You're here to be an athlete. It's something you want to do. Um, man, make it kind of be college athletics again. How do, uh, you know, I ask you if all of your guys, if their families are good, how do you keep track of all of them? And, are we even gonna? Are you guys even gonna know? Are you getting reports on grades and stuff like that? Are you still getting all that stuff? We we are. Our academic service staff uh, does an unbelievable job, uh, and we get a, hey, this guy didn't turn in this or whatever. And that was my biggest concern. Um, and, and they have virtual tutor, tutors and all that kind of stuff. But that was my biggest concern going home because, you know, you were on five years of different wrestling teams. And there were some guys that were super diligent and did what they were supposed to do. And there are some guys that, uh, that needed um, gentle reminders, you know, if I want, if you could put it that way. And it's hard to give those guys gentle reminders when they're at home. Um, you know, I'm a little bit more detached because of that. Um, you know, sometimes they're in a situation where, mom and dad really don't understand, you know, you're home from college. So we need help get out and work in the yard or on the farm or whatever it might be. Um, and we just tried to, to get guys squared away and you have to carve out time every day. You know, you have to carve out time every day to do your school work and it can't be, I worked all day. I played video games and then it, 10 o'clock, I'm going to start working on this because they're like I am. At 10 o'clock, I'm ready to cash it in, sit on the couch, do nothing, and then go to bed. All right. So you have to carve out time. You have to have a pretty good schedule. And we just try to get that point across to them. And it's not easy, though, too, because like you're saying, the general reminders, the, hey, hey, we have a meeting in my office. That's just not a thing now. Or, hey, meet me in the restaurant. Right. Or, hey, I'll be down in the locker room. And, you know, guys are all over the board as far as the, the online learning or the virtual learning goes. Uh, you know, some some professors are really into it and have Zoom classes and they're, you know, they have something regular class time every day. And other professors are um, choose to do it a different way as far as maybe they're just emailing them assignments or do this, do that. Um you know, I don't know how great some guys are about checking emails and um, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, I think it's, it, you know, whether it has or hasn't, but it, it, it's going to force them to, to be a little bit more diligent in those things. Okay. So I know we, we've been on here for over almost almost an hour, just under an hour. But I, I got one more. I got a question about the beard. Yeah. I see that. I see it. And. You've always had jet black hair for the most part when I've seen you. There's a little gray. You're 54. You know, I always talk to the Silver Fox, uh, you know, Joe McFarlane. And then in Cleveland, he never, he didn't mention to me that he would be retiring. Yeah. 
So how much treads left on the tire for Joel Greenley? You know, that's a great question. I, I mean, hey, I love what I do. I'm still excited about it. I still think I work hard at it. I still think I have a lot to offer guys. Um, you, you know, you asked me in college, and I, I you know, I, I think I believed it at the time, and I tell the story is, man, I don't, I don't know if I'll live to be 50. So, uh, and then I turned 50, and I'm like, well, 50 is not so bad. Uh, <laughs> so, I, I don't know. I, I think I think you have to. I think you, at some point in time, hey, yes, you are going to start slowing down. So, um, obviously, I think over the years we've changed and adapted the way I do things. Anyway, um, you know, I, I think you look at you know our football coach, for instance, Frank Solish, and I, I don't I don't want to make him older than he is and uh, but I think he's either 72 or 73 years old and um you wouldn't know it all right and I still think he's putting a good product on the field and he's still doing the things he needs to do to be successful um for me you, you sit down and you look at the end of every year and um am I capable of doing what I need to do Am I capable of relating to young people? Am I, am I capable of uh, running the program? And um, to me, when you answer, hey, you know what, I don't think I did the job I needed to do, that's when it's time to, time to go. So that's kind of a poor answer to your question, but that's about the best I can do. <laughs> How are the assistants doing? Um, Heffernan and Spawn Seller, those are, you only have those, those are the only two you have, right? Correct. How are they doing with this, and, and, and how do you even know what they're doing? Is it just a, a constant back and forth between you three every day? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I think they're two totally different uh, personalities. You know, Heffernan, I think, is driving crazy. He's getting a workout every day. The other day, my wife and I are waking, walking on the bike path, and I see this guy with a – looks like his knees hurt and his back hurts and his hips hurt running down the bike path coming towards us. And as he's getting closer and closer, I'm like, I think that's happening. Well, and he's running 12 miles every day, you know, <laughs> what <a> maniac. <laughs> so, um, he lives in an apartment in town and is driving him nuts. Um, Spawn's on the other, other hand has bought a house and is fixing it up and, you know, he's got millions of projects going and, um, you know, is it driving him nuts that he can't work out and be with the guys? Yes, without a doubt. Um, but he just handles it in a different way. And, you know, we don't even talk every day, to be honest. We, we text probably every day and talk every other. Um, hey, what are we doing recruiting wise? How are, you know, how'd your conversations with this guy go? Have you got a hold of him? you know, all that kind of stuff. And, and, uh, so it, it, you know, it's different for everybody. For me, you know, I try to get a workout in every day and I live on 15 acres and got a lot of grass to mow and a couple of horses. And I, I, I work in the morning and early afternoon and I go do some stuff and around the house and pick up this, clean up that and come back and make some calls at night and do it all over. And your kids go to Ohio U? Um, my son has already graduated from Ohio U. My daughter is in her third year now. And are you still the cash machine? Uh, you know, I, I mean, they, they obviously they both have done an outstanding job of, you know, really kind of providing for themselves. Did we help them out without a doubt? Did we, did we give them all the money they needed. No, uh, my son's got a great job. So for him, no, my daughter, a little bit, you know, the, she had all really three different jobs all kind of revolved around the university or, or college lifestyle. And, uh, once this happened, she lost all three of them. I, I mean, you know, I don't know about lost them, but they're on hold until things open back up. So, um, been a little bit more lenient with her and if dad needs help dad will call her and 
you know, I was selling some stuff on eBay, Craigslist, whatever. I was like, ah, if you can come out and take pictures of it and post it up there, I'll give you 10% of whatever we sell for you. <laughs> um, mowing grass, why don't you come out and help me pick up sticks and I'll pay you 10 bucks an hour. So, um, you know, stuff like that for her. And he, didn't he move to, to Florida? Wasn't that him? Moved to Florida. When the COVID-19 hit, they kind of got the stay at home, work from home thing. And he, he loves to be out on the water and has a boat. And uh, was kind of doing that for a week or two. And then they shut down the boat ramps and the beaches. And um, so then he was stuck at home and then his roommate went home and he's like, I'm out of here. <laughs> he's living in our house now. So <laughs> does he Until still work, back to work remotely? Yeah. Yeah. Like, He's pretty diligent about it. He's up every morning. They have a, you know, kind of a, a early morning Zoom call, and he's in on that. And he works pretty much the, in his in a room with the door shut most of the day. And at five o'clock, he wanders out, and that's that. Hey, did he graduate from high school um, with Joe Burrow? He did. So they're the same class, both, and they went to high school together. Son, they, both my son and daughter were in, in college with, with – or not in college, excuse me, in high school with Joe. Um, my daughter was two years behind him, and then Walker was in the same class. So him and Walker, they walked together from the graduation. Yeah. Um, tonight's uh, draft. Who you got? Who you got first round? Who the Bengals taking? <laughs> I think Joe Burrow. I, you know, I mean – what an awesome story for all the kids in Athens. And, and um, you know, he's a super, I, I, I know him, but I don't, you know, I know enough to say, Hey, hi, how you doing? But I don't know him, know him, but I, everything I know about him, he's a great kid and um, super hard worker, does all the right things. So what a great role model for the, the kids in Athens and, and uh, in, in the Athens community. So I think everybody around here is super excited Obviously, that he had such a great career at LSU and Ohio State, but even more so to, to have him go to the Bengals and um, hopefully have a great career there as well. They can't. I don't know if the Bengals can mess this up. I'm gonna be honest with you. You got to. You know, I, you got to take him. I, I, uh, I uh, yeah, I, I think so. But I, there's been crazier things that happened at the last minute, so. Yeah, um, yeah. The draft has a history of that, right? I mean, the draft is the draft. Like, if you look at Elway, if you look at Eli Manning, you know, I'm not going to play for this team or that team. I just don't think the Burroughs roll like that. As a matter of fact, his dad was one of your coworkers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His, you know, his whole family's super great. So, um, I, I don't think so either. Uh, you know, excited to see what happens. Excited to. To, for the Athens community, I'm excited for the Burroughs, but uh, I, I, you know, I expect them to be a bingo, but I don't know, you know. Do they still live there? Do the Burroughs still live around Athens? Yeah, I actually, I think during this whole this whole thing, Joe's at home in the Plains. Are you serious? He's there? Yeah, I, yeah, I think. I mean, I mean, I don't know, but I thought I heard. I heard my son say he was over in that area and saw him drive by. So that's yeah, crazy. I think he's been. That's awesome, man. And then he did. Did you see how the food bank and all that went with him? Heck yeah, that was like four or five hundred thousand dollars after his Heisman speech. Unbelievable. So awesome, man. So awesome. And and you know what, man? That's just crazy because. They started, he was born in Nebraska, I want to say, because they were in Nebraska with Solich, weren't they? You know what? I, I'm pretty, I'm I'm pretty sure that's how it I'm happened. I'm not 100% Joe. sure, but I, I, I think he, his, he might have been born in Ames, Iowa, because his dad was a football coach there. And I, then they went I to Nebraska, know. and then when, when the whole staff came with Solich, is when he came mm -hmm. as like a boy. Uh no, I, he he came a couple years after Frank got here. To, okay. to be honest, I mean his dad was defensive coordinator at North Dakota State, I believe. Okay, but I just remember seeing, you know, through the Heisman and the, the all that stuff, kind of a, uh, a video clip of him running around on the football field at Ames High. He was like two years old 
and his dad was the, the high school coach at Ames High. So I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think he was actually born in Ames. Okay. And and uh, then went to Lincoln, then then North Dakota, and then then Athens. I I, I want to say uh, I want to say they were in, you know Walker was in third grade when Joe moved here. Okay. He, yeah, I'm, he was a boy. I'm he was an positive. elementary school boy. Because uh, okay. Mm-hmm. You know, I want you to think about that right there. You just described their path and all the moves they made. Think about how lucky you've been in the twenty. Two years, twenty three years now, because you were the interim coach ninety seven, ninety eight. Think about it. Joel Greenley hasn't had to move all around the country. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I've had a couple opportunities to move, but I, I really love the Athens community. I love Ohio University. Um, you know, I, I think we've grown as a program. Uh, obviously, scholarship wise, support staff wise, uh, budget wise, since I've been here. So. Uh, there's not a lot of bit better places. <laughs> All right. We're over an hour. I got uh, classes coming up here. You know, like I cut you off the last time, but that was only like six or seven minutes. Um, what would you say, last thing, what would you say to kids who are coming in, you know, maybe the, they're seniors now and, and, and they're coming into the Athens program and at Ohio University? What do you say to the kids, the parents of the future program, and what's the future look like for you guys and what are your expectations and what would you say to like, whether it's ease their tension or let them know where you guys stand on this whole commitment to, you know, your, their, their kid coming to get, getting a great student athlete experience at Ohio university. Well, uh, I think to make the most of whatever situation you're in and have a positive attitude about it. And I'm super excited for the, the, the future of Ohio wrestling right now. I think, uh, We've got one of the best group of kids we've ever had. Um, I'm really expecting us to, to, to have a, you know, great seasons in the coming years. I think the guys we brought in are, um, are, are not only great wrestlers, but great students and, and great citizens. And um, I think the big thing is, hey, just get involved in it. Um, you know, you have five years to be the best you can be at this. Do everything in your power to make the most out of those five years. And um, so when you when you, when you look back on it, you have no regrets. Awesome, Joel. I like it. I, I like the commitment to it. And, and hopefully we see you there through those five years to 59. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, man. Hey, you got anything else for me? I don't. No, I appreciate you, you having me on today. I, you know, like we talked about earlier i think that's super important that people get involved and, and sign that petition and, and and let the the ncaa know that that uh we think olympic sports not just wrestling but all sports are important and they have a place in college athletics and um it, it'll be a tough time for a few years but we'll get through it awesome joel i appreciate the time hey stick around after i cut these two videos i'm going to talk to you off camera a little bit afterwards but, uh, all right, sounds good. Awesome, Joel. Thank you for the time. You're the man, and stick around a little bit here, all right? All right, thank you.